Hey, I'm Jay Frechette, and you're watching The Bulletin. This week, get the latest update from Season 1 of the Halo Championship Series. We go inside 343 with Josh Holmes to talk about Halo 5 Guardians post-beta, and we chat about the new indie title for Xbox, hashtag IDARB, with Frank O'Connor. The HCS race continues as last weekend teams competed in Online Cup number 5 for those precious HCS points. Denial continued their hot streak and took first place again with back-to-back -back wins. Second place went to the new Noble Black roster who were able to put together an impressive run blowing past Cloud9 and CLG on their way to the finals. Finally, rounding out the top three was CLG with another strong performance. Taking a look at the current standings, CLG remains in the number one seed with 6,530 HCS points, but Denial is right behind them and are looking to take CLG down before the Gamers Forgiving event. Evil Geniuses sits comfortably at the number three seed, but we'll see if they've got enough in the tank to make one last push for first. There are still two more online cups before our next big LAN tournament at Gamers Forgiving in Ann Arbor, Michigan on February 21st and 22nd. This will all lead up to the Season 1 Finals at PAX East in Boston. With 3,000 HCS points going to the winner at Gamers Forgiving, the current standings could look very different by the time we get to the Finals. So can CLG hold on to their top seed? Does Denial have what it takes to dethrone CLG? As always, for the latest updates, standings, and schedule, hop over to halowaypoint.com slash HCS. The Halo 5 Guardians multiplayer beta is over and it was an enormous success. With nearly 20 million games played during the three-week beta, we now have a treasure trove of data to cull through to help make Halo 5 Guardians the best it can be when it's released later this year. I wanted to see what kind of things we learned, so I pulled aside Halo 5 Guardians producer Josh Holmes and threw a few questions his way. Now here we are post-beta. I've played it a ton over the last three weeks. Yes, played with right. you a few times, yeah. played against you a few times. What was that experience like over the last three weeks? What were you guys doing during that time? I spent pretty much the entire time of the beta uh, playing the game alongside fans and just pouring over feedback. Double kill. We also kicked off the Halo Community Feedback Program yep. uh, where folks could sign up uh, and they still can to opt in to receive surveys to kind of like have their voice be heard at 343. And you guys have been very busy with that lately. Um, what have you gathered? What's some of the stuff you've gathered from that? Yeah, the amount of feedback that we got through the beta process is just unprecedented. It completely exceeded any of our expectations wow. in, a, in a good way. Wow. Over 16,000 people have registered, wow. um, which is amazing. Yeah. The average number of hours spent playing Halo across the, the 16,000 participants in the community feedback program is uh, 40 days. That's For, the average? That's the average is 40 days. And then if you if you take the median, which is like, you know, okay, let's take the outliers out of it. Sure. Let's just look at what's the midpoint of that 20, I think it's 22 days. A lot of that has been focused on the new Spartan abilities yep. and getting people's feedback on that. How are you guys aggregating that feedback and, you know, what sort of changes are you starting to implement into it? We've been doing some tweaks to sprint. We have higher base speed, lower top end sprint, so there's a little bit less of a delta between the two of those. Um, one of the things that we were talking about going into beta was uh, you know, moving ground pound to a different control so that we don't have that conflict between ground pound and crouch jump. We're doing some um, adjustments to strafe acceleration, so there's faster acceleration. You can strafe and wow. have a little bit more responsiveness there. Cool. Um, we're looking at some improvements to the motion tracker to try and motivate more movement within the higher competitive ranks. Was there an ability that was definitely the most popular out of the new ones? Thruster, by far, seemed to be the most popular. What is the, the focus for you guys going into this sort of home stretch, really, in our last year before you know, we ship the game? What's next for you? Oh, so much. I mean, we still have to talk about the rest of our bigger multiplayer experience. We have the campaign experience, which yeah. we haven't really revealed much about as well. And so we have the team hard at work on the new campaign for Halo 5 Guardians. So for us to be able to have a beta this early in development, have fans be able to get hands on with the game while it's still very much in flux and in development and provide their feedback and have that be a voice into um, what we do going forward is pretty pretty special. I mean, for the team here, it's unprecedented. It's really gonna give us a lot of great feedback and ideas that will fuel the rest of the development. Earlier this week, I was told I have to check out this new indie game for Xbox called Hashtag IDARB. That stands for I Drew a Red Box. 
not only because it's a fun, endearing game, but also our very own Frank O'Connor made some Halo-themed characters for it. Well, I love it, and it's doing some very cool things that I wanted to know more about, so I grabbed Frank to chat about how he got involved and what it's like to play it. I was kind of like enamored by this game almost right away. How would you describe what this game is? It's exactly a cross between Kaboom and Sensible Soccer. So Kaboom on the Atari 2600 and Sensible Soccer, which is a kind of weird floaty physics soccer game. It feels exactly like a cross between those two things. You actually were involved in some of the character creation in it because it has like a little pixel editor. Yeah, that's a that's a reductive way to talk about the style and grace that I added to this project. How many characters did you end up making? I think I made like eight characters. I made a bunch of Spartans, boy Spartans and girl Spartans. And I made Halsey, yep. Dr. Halsey. She's got one arm. And I made a grunt. I made Hamish Beamish. He's got a broom. It's a smiley face too. That I smiley face. Like. He's got a smiley face. He's happy and doing his job. Did you go to them and say like, I want to make some Halo characters? Did they come to you and nope. say like, make some Halo characters? No, they, they came to us and said, can we have some Halo characters? And I said, yeah, it's a $10 million per year annual license and you can have these six sprites that I drew in about 15 minutes. That's about so right. yeah, I get to keep all that money too. Good for you. No, the origin was, Mike Michael went on Facebook one day, said, I drew a red box. What should I do with this? How can I turn it in a game? And actually, when you're making sprites for it, they send you a Photoshop template and it's just a red box. So Micah just asked if we'd be interested in doing it. We said yes, and then we found out it was gonna be free with Games with Gold, so that was good too. You know, another aspect that I realized this morning when we were playing it in the office was the Twitch and Twitter integration. It's sort of essential to the game's flavor. While you're playing, like, stuff is happening in real time. There's real feeds, people can comment on your game, give you suggestions. It's a weirdly social thing. For some people, the game's secondary in the social aspect is primary. You can make a change, you can rearrange, it's your game. I die. And it's uh, free right now for February Whoa. in Games with Gold. Yeah. So uh, I loved it. I thought it's, yeah. it's just, I can't wait to go play more of it. And you guys should definitely go check it out. We're having a lot of fun playing it here at the office, and you can download hashtag iDarb for free during February as part of Games with Gold if you have a Gold Xbox Live membership. And now it's time for Fresh Picks, brought to you by America's Navy. Assault on Squad 45 in the original section is brought to you by the folks at Megablox, and it's a fun and very popular series based in the Halo universe that's done with stop motion, featuring many of the figures and vehicles that they've created. And you should also check out Halo Music Requiem in the music section. This is one of my favorite tracks and scenes from Halo 4. When you come out of the cave in the Requiem mission and you get your first view of the mysterious planet Chief and Cortana crashed on, it's beautiful. You should check it out. And as always, we are constantly looking for new community creation. So if you have something really cool to show us, send us a link to video submissions at halowaypoint.com. And that's it for us this week. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The Bulletin.